Good afternoon, good evening, or perhaps good morning, um, wherever you are. I want to welcome all of you to today's panel, Your Journey. Uh, now I know, five years out. So we're going to be speaking to some GSB alums who graduated in um, the class of 2016 in our five years post-graduation. Today's event, um, I'm going to just give a brief introduction to our global community. I'll talk a little bit about the alumni um, population uh, and representation of the GSB around the world. I'm going to introduce our panelists. In fact, I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Um, and uh, I have some Q&A for them just to start off things, to uh, hear their experience about their time at the GSB and for them to share that with you. Um, but I also want this to be somewhat interactive, as interactive as we can be on Zoom. So if there are specific questions you have for the panelists, um, either off the top of your head right now or something that comes up as they are sharing and speaking, um, feel free to ask that question in the Q&A pod. I'll be monitoring those. You have the chance to, to upvote those. So if someone asks something you also wanna hear the answer to, feel free to do that and I'll try to monitor. We'll get to as many of those as we can. Um, but we do have um, just about 50 more minutes together. So uh, this time usually flies right by. Um, like I said, we'll try to answer as much as we can. So um, with that, uh, the GSB alumni, I hope that the five folks or the four uh, panelists joining us today can attest to the fact that um, it's a strong network, um, but numerically it's 30,000 plus uh, alumni globally um, represented around the world. There's actually 60 volunteer-led chapters that are regionally um, based. Um, in addition to that, there's also diversity chapters and different programs to support women. Um, I'm curious to hear from Harala and Emily, whether they're involved in, in either of those, but our Women's Circles is a, a strong program in place uh, to support women after. And in addition to just the network that I'm sharing about um, right now, there's also support that continues beyond the GSB. We'll talk a little bit about the role the CMC might have played in helping our panelists um, secure their jobs or positions post GSB, but there's also support that continues um, after being a student too. And so we can talk a little bit about that. Um, with that, I want our panelists to go ahead and introduce themselves. I have a little bit of information up about each of them, um, but I want them to, to kind of go through who they are and what they were doing before the GSB and, and where they are now. Um, and, and in addition to just introducing yourself, you guys, if you don't mind sharing um, with the group today, what was perhaps your most impactful experience? This could be um, a course that you took or um, of course you took or just you know an experience you had whether it was travels or something extracurricular or personal whatever it may have been during your time at the gsb uh, we'll just go across where the names are so emily uh, you are first amazing hi everybody uh, excited to be chatting with you all also excited to see all my fellow uh alums on the call uh so as the slide says uh, i went to yale undergrad Prior to the GSB, I spent a lot of time at Bain, Bain and Company Consulting, and worked predominantly within their retail space. I also worked a little bit in the nonprofit space. Um, and then after the GSB, I went back to Bain for a little bit, but I also had fun um, times in startup land at Apple, um, and then have landed back now in like the design and retail world. So that's um, my current employer is F. Schumacher & Co. So you see this awesome wallpaper, that's F. Schumacher & Co. Um, and had so many amazing uh, memories and like meaningful experiences. Uh, I will talk probably about uh, just a trip to India actually that I took. Um, so this was actually like coordinated and organized similar to a GST and we sort of copied a GST, but it was with um, one of like the people that I became very close to Bharat in our class. Um, and he is um, an amazing Indian man who took us all around India. Um, but what was so special about it, it was that it was this um, really diverse group of people from all over the world. Um, and Bharat cared and loved his country so much and getting to experience it through his eyes um, was like truly uh, like su super, super memorable. Um, and I still, 
uh, remember all of the amazing meals, all of the moments with politicians, all of the like crowded street corners. Um, and uh, I'm excited that all of those folks are still very close to me. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Harav, would you like to go next? Yeah, it's so good to meet everyone from all over the world. Uh, and I know people are staying up late or waking up early for this. So, hi, my name is Haral. I, um, I'm originally from India. So I grew up in India, did undergrad back in Mumbai. Um, and then US being at the forefront of innovation and tech brought me here. So I studied uh, computer science uh, at Carnegie Mellon and then joined Apple, um, really working on some of the first generation products. I was um, in software engineering, very much heads down if some of you have iPhone. I don't know if I can claim yet, but if you could make a call, that was because of me at least a decade ago. I don't think that's true anymore. Um, GSV was fun. Um, I did venture capital. I tried impact and everything and came back to realizing my heart is still in technology and building things. So I continued to be um, on my journey to be more product uh, management and product leadership. So currently I'm at Amplitude overseeing kind of a product team. Um, for those of you not aware, Amplitude is a product analytics company. So we build product SaaS um, tools for product managers, which is a great place to be. Um, with respect to uh, my favorite experience, I think I'm following Emily's lead here is like travel is a big part of GSP. You'll all realize that. And so some of the memories and fond memories always come from there. For me, one of my founders was uh, when we went to a trip uh, to Russia and Serbia. So I did see someone from there as well, which is awesome. Um, I think this was not an official trip led, but two of our classmates are from Russia. And I think for me, the biggest thing is I would have never otherwise gone to Russia unless they led a trip. Uh, but we also went in March. So when we were in like the, uh, uh, like, you know, rural parts of it we've seen like frozen lakes we also did like ice skating on a the freshwater lake called lake baikal and this the whole site and spending time with the classmates was like the most memorable we had visited the pravda pravda like the news communism so understanding a lot from that perspective from the locals perspective was very eye-opening versus just hearing what you read in the media um, and then, yeah, classes wise, there's always a lot more we can talk as we evolve the conversations. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, John, you're next. All right. uh, hello, everyone. Um, similar to, I'm John. Uh, similar to Emily, I also, uh, also went to Yale. Um, I studied physics and mechanical engineering uh, and then did a master's at, at Penn in robotics after that. Um, so as you can probably assume, I have focused a lot on technology and robotics, uh, both um, after undergrad and after GSB, um, and spent some time at uh, MathWorks, which is a company that makes MATLAB, um, playing around with some of their toolboxes and building a, ro a robotics product there. Um, and then, yeah, GSB, I switched my focus from being a, an engineer into doing more product-oriented stuff. Um, and since then, I've uh, been at a couple of different companies uh, in various parts of the robotics industry. So I was at iRobot most immediately after graduation, which, um, uh, which is the Roomba company uh, working on some of, their, um, some of their Roomba models. And uh, subsequently, I was at a company called Berkshire Gray, uh, which is a industrial automation provider, which uh, actually recently went, went public years back. And most recently, just very recently, I joined Waymo, which is, uh, which is Google's um, autonomous car project, so to speak. So um, yeah, uh, GSB was obviously <laughs> very influential. I think we would all agree uh, that there's a lot of different aspects of our GSB experiences that we'd love to highlight here. Um, uh, I think that for me, uh, I, I agree. I think travel is one of the more impactful things. Um, and but I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, highlight what's called a GMix, a global management immersion experience uh, that I did during um, during my summer, uh, where um, went to Buenos Aires uh, to work for uh, I think it was a little over a month or so at a company called Wormhole, which does um, online. It's an online education platform similar to Coursera or 
or edX, um, but for the Latin American market. And they're a small company. Uh, I think they still are a fairly small company, but at the time they were just under 30 folks. And two of us from GSB went there and we uh, got some scope. It was kind of, it was my first experience doing anything product management related. And it was amazing to learn it, learn it from, uh, from uh, the folks at the Argentine company. And uh, we were really brought under the wing of their leadership team, which was a very, it was a very rewarding and special experience because not only did they introduce us to their product and their way of doing things, and we're very open to hearing, hearing our perspectives and we were able to contribute and learn a lot, um, but they also helped introduce us to the culture and we got to do a handful of uh, fun activities in the city and really have quite a unique experience. So, Awesome, thank you for sharing. Uh, Jason, do you mind introducing yourself and, and sharing also? Of course, um, hey everyone, my name is Jason Scott. Sorry, I'm coming to you from mobile. So if my phone falls, it's, <laughs> it's my fault, not yours. Um, but I am currently uh, at Google, but going all the way back before uh, GSB. So I went to undergrad um, at MIT and I was actually in biological sciences. Um, definitely thought I was going to be a doctor <laughs> um, at that point in time in my life. And then um, ended up uh, really, um, as many people do towards the end of my college experience, really not knowing what I want to do in my life. So I ended up in consulting. Um, but luckily, uh, the time, the part of consulting I was in, I was doing innovation and R&D consulting for um, big companies. And really, um, at that point, I uh, realized that I loved kind of the idea of exploring something from scratch or something novel or something um, uncharted. And so uh, I had the realization, I was like, I should move to San Francisco and start working at startups. So I ended up taking a job at a startup and also applying to business school at that point in time. Um, really focused on uh, learning about entrepreneurship and trying to fill that gap and was lucky enough to get into the GSB. Um, and, and really since then, my career has all, always been about startups. So um, ended up working in venture capital for a little bit at Highland Capital Partners, um, doing some entrepreneurial things on my own. And then now I'm leading a lot of our startup work here at Google um, and running a lot of our accelerator programs and, and some of our uh, angel investment funds and things like that. So um, really fun work. Uh, I also hearing everyone it brought me back because I uh, so many of my favorite memories were just uh, the one on one connections that I have with so many of the individuals and those chance chances to have those authentic conversations and hear people speak so passionately about their journeys. And I remember actually done I don't know if you remember this, but I remember actually meeting you at our like, first, first, first admit welcome event in Boston and learning about um, the work that you're doing and, and just being so an odd and having these conversations with individuals who are just so passionate about so many different spaces. And I think when I think about my favorite GSP moments, those were them, right? Where whether it's the large group scenarios or the small group scenarios, the talks or the trips, or even just the, the casual um, lunches with someone new in Times Square, it was just hearing people speak so passionately about areas that I knew nothing about, whether it's media or fashion or retail or robotics. And so um, that was what was magical for me about GSP and, and still is um, the kind of diversity of perspective, expertise and, and kind of passion. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I do want to just for educational purposes for those on, um, like some acronyms were mentioned that I want to make sure everyone understands what they are, because there's a lot of acronyms at the GSB. Um, and so the GST was mentioned. This is a called this stands for global study trip. And then GMIX was mentioned. This is a global management immersion experience. Um, and these are two ways you can fulfill another acronym, which is your GER, which is your global experience requirement. So so a big component of the learning at the GSB is not just in classroom, which next question, just to tee that up, might be about a class that impacted you guys since none of you shared about academics, but um, which is fine. But, um, but also a big component is hands-on experiential learning and getting out of your comfort zone. So that idea of um, you know, embracing, uh, like what Jason said, the diversity of perspectives, and that can be done in a lot of different ways, whether it's conversations or travel, um, that is something that is hugely embraced and encouraged at the GSB. Uh, that said, so are academics. And so I'd love to um, just circle back with you guys about um, perhaps, you know, you're five years out now, um, you all took the foundational courses, but you also, because it's a general management program, took electives um, pretty soon on in your first year and then all of your second year. Um, were there any classes that you found to be like the most impactful either during your time here and you don't use it at all now, or just, you know, as you are five years out and you are 
in your organizations and, and working, is there anything you look back on that has helped you so much from the GSB? Uh, let's start with uh, John this time. Sure. So uh, there's a bunch of classes that I would list up here. Um, I think probably the most impactful is one called Managing Growing Enterprises, which I think for a lot of folks, I think a lot of folks would agree that that was a pretty impactful <laughs> class. Um, this is one where it's it's very case-based, um, but for me, for me, the special part of the case-based bit was that more often than not, the protagonists of the case would join you in the class. Uh, and at least for the first class, it was a bit of a surprise. They don't tell you that that's what's going to happen. Um, but uh, I, I think in the course of going through the, uh, the different challenges that each of these you know, entrepreneurs faced when they were, when they were building their businesses, um, you learn a lot about the way that they thought about it versus the way that you would think about it. Because the, the, the method within the course is the instructors will often effectively role play the scenarios out. Um, and it teaches you a lot about, uh, about effectively good ways and ways that work and ways that don't work for handling difficult conversations and other kind of like personnel and, and sometimes strategic related uh, things that come up just on a day to day basis. And while the focus is a lot on um, either startups or executive level stuff, um, it's uh, you end up with a with a perspective that cuts across lots of lots of different areas and you can apply it even immediately after GSB, it, it, it doesn't have any, any relevance to, to it doesn't strictly have relevance to things five, 10 years out. So uh, that was, for me, that was the most impactful course. Great, thanks for sharing. Um, Haral, do you mind sharing a course that impacted you? Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely. Before before I share, like to build on John's for like the, the managing growing enterprise is definitely something you we carry for life. But for me, the most memorable for that one was because I like I role played to fire someone as a board member. And that someone who is a CEO chairman, I let I was working for him three years later. Just imagine the situation. You fired the person in the class for, to not be the CEO, but he still is, of course. And <laughs> I learned how to work. And this is Kevin Tavili, he teaches at the GSB as well. Um, but for me, like one of my most favorite class, like there were definitely several, but um, was a class I took it the last quarter was called Art of Self-Coaching. Um, it was with a coach called Ed Batista. I think he teaches a lot of different things, but it was like, it helped me sum up my GSB experience a lot and how to carry that forward and continue to have the learning even after GSB. So um, he, it went a lot into just, happiness and reflection and thinking about it which truly summarized and I still follow his blog a lot and from time to time ask him a lot of situational questions um, uh, he's he's a coach to a lot of uh, executives at like startups and tech companies um, but for me like that was like the most reflective class that helped me kind of put my entire experience together so highly encourage when people get in to take that one <laughs> Thank you. Um, Emily, do you mind sharing yours? Sure. Well, someone has to do it and I'll do it. My really impactful class was interpersonal dynamics. Um, touchy feely. I think, I think it's called interpersonal dynamics, right? Touchy -feely it is on that. Yep. <laughs> is what I remember it as. Um, and, and honestly, like all classes like that, like those are the classes that I really appreciated. Um, so like, um, high performance leadership, things like coaching, all my fellows classes. I think because like so much of why I came to business school was to like work on my own confidence and work on my like belief that I belonged in the business world. And so much of what those classes accomplished for me was like a real space and time to like deeply understand myself. And that's such a rare thing <laughs> and such a kind of like selfish thing in some ways to be able to spend two years understanding that stuff. Um, and, you know, I, I think now as a result of those classes, I'm a 
I don't remember a lot of the like really specifics of the finance classes I took or anything like that. Um, I'm sure there's going to be another great example from other people of that. <laughs> um, but for me, like those classes are why I'm like the leader I am now today and the organizations I'm in because I know who I am because I know what I want other people to feel like when I interact with them. I'm like not I'm like cool with the things that make me emotional and I'm cool with the things that make me um, me uh, and all that stuff is like very very hard I think to to like to learn or to give yourself space to do and so um, I will forever forever be grateful for for the time to do that and have Stanford enabled that. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. And Jason, is there anything else to add about a class that impacted you? Um, mine is um, somewhat polarizing for both current students and former students, <laughs> but and even for myself. But this, the class that I say to this day that I remember and think about the most was this class called Path to Power. It talks about pow power and influence and understanding your power and influence within scenarios. And, and I think Ultimately, where I came out is, is how to make sure you use your power and influence for good and, and are conscious about that. And so for me, I sit in meetings all day, every day where I'm thinking about influence and, and what are the power dynamics in those rooms and, and how do you make sure that you're conscious of them and intentional about um, your behavior and, and how it might influence decisions and, and how people feel, I guess. And so um, and using power for good. Uh, so and not not having power be a bad word, I guess, is also something that I think a lot of us took away from that class. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I feel like um, so the examples you guys all gave, especially the art of self-coaching and interpersonal dynamics and paths to power are also a, a highlight. Another thing that's really important to the GSB experience, which is the idea of developing yourself as a leader um, at the GSB, um, you know, you can uh, get schooled in finance and strategy and things like that in a lot of different places, but really um, developing yourself as a leader to go out and, and manage people and organizations is a key component of the program here. Um, I'm going to ask one more question and then I'll start kind of taking them from the audience. So I thank everyone for, for posting their questions. I'm seeing them. And this actually relates to one of the ones that's been upvoted, but you guys are all five years out. Um, and you came into the GSB with an idea perhaps of what it is you wanted to do maybe, or at least maybe what you wanted to get out of um, an MBA program. And so just seeing where you are now, and this is somewhat of a deep question, but are you where you thought you'd be? Um, and for those who maybe are, that's awesome. We'd love to hear that. And for those who have pivoted or changed, um, we want to hear that too. And I'd also... Um, kind of infused in that answer if if it has impacted you a bit like how what role has the Stanford network played in helping you um, in your five years uh, post GSB so we'll go backwards now we'll start with Jason <laughs> you gave me the literally I was like please don't start with me for this question <laughs> but, uh, but no 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 it works um I mean no I think in short because I don't think I knew where I would be and I don't think I I think um as you do in many situations, you get around all these amazing people and you go through the, the journey of, of am I, do, I, am, do I belong here? Am I, did I, am I supposed to be here? And then you get the confidence back and such. So I think um, the, the idea of where I, where I would be in five years changed so much throughout the GSB. But I think ultimately I'm still chasing my North Star, which is what is what was most important. And I think really, when I look back to the answer and the question of what matters most and why, I think I'm still headed into that direction, even though what I do functionally on a day-to-day -day basis is not, I, I had no idea that this is what I would be doing, I think, back then. Um, but to the power, I think your last point is what was super important for me. I think I think I even underestimated the power of the GSB network. Um, I, to this day, even within my, not just people within my class, but even when at work and I like find out someone was a GSB alum and then all of a sudden we're like, <laughs> best buddies and then we're like collaborating and things like that and, and it's just the network is so powerful and it truly has created such tangible value um in my in my life and my career and 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 I wouldn't be where I am today without it so um or I mean maybe hopefully I would have made it some eventually but I definitely wouldn't have gotten here as fast it was definitely a catalyst in that and so um highly appreciative of it awesome thank you um Emily why don't we go next to you okay um, I also want to say that 
I didn't say this at the beginning, but also one of my key memories is always dancing on the dance floor with Jason Scott. He is one <laughs> of the best dancers in the world. And every wedding I've been to with him is the more fun because of him. Every party at the GSB is more fun because of him. The like, um, like the square was more fun because of him. So anyway, I need to afford that answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, cool. Um, he's he's he can do it all. He's a Renaissance man. Um, I think I. No, I mean, yes, I had no idea where I would be in five years. I had ideas and thoughts that like, and I was very passionate about retail and I was passionate about consumer and I wanted to go to Stanford to connect consumer to um, like the future of innovation and retail. Um, so that in some ways I think has played out, which is interesting, although I would have never expected to be at a home interiors company and sling and wallpaper. But um, I, I do think that what I would say is that Stamp, Stamp, like the Stanford Alumni Network has been like instrumental to every career choice I've made post the GSB. Like I, at every moment where I was thinking about leaving or staying somewhere, like the first people I called were my GSB colleagues, whether it was like Emily or Sarah or Sarah, I think I want to go into a startup, but I don't know which one, like your VC, tell me the ones that are good and tell me the ones that I should stay away from or, um, I don't know, just even sharing any of my life moments now, like GSBers are the people that I want to do that with. Like there are two GSBers in my living room right now, like drinking tequila and eating cheese while I'm on this call. So um, <laughs> the network is like, are my like sort of cornerstones, like the touch points that help me to decide what's next and to help me like reground myself and who I am. And I think like to Jason's point, I still think I'm like, for sure on the journey of like, what do I want to be when I grow up? Who am I? Um, but I feel very, very fortunate that I have all these humans in my corner that are both experts in their fields or um, who just know me so well that they can say like, Emily, no, you don't want to do that. That's, that doesn't sound like anything you would ever want to do. Um, so yes. Yet yeah, no to no to being where I am, where I thought I would be five years from the uh, GSB, but yes to Stanford being exceptionally like instrumental in in my current life. Awesome, thank you, um, Haral. Why don't you answer that net? Yeah, so I think for me, I did know like I want to always stay in technology, but not exactly know what function or job I would be doing. So like, I think when you ask this question, I think most of us entered GSB writing an essay, but definitely still figuring things out. I was, I, I still joke that I think one of the reasons I went to business school was because I didn't know what to do with life. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, it did help me at least discover what I don't want. Um, so I did. I I chose more of a path of elimination to figure things out. Uh, uh, um, but one of the I think where just was really helped and uh, you know is like I think accelerated a little bit of how what I would have thought about, especially when it came to managing people and giving me the confidence to raise my hand and to ask for what I want. Whereas prior to that, uh, you know, I think going back to Emily's point, like confidence is definitely one of the things GSB helped us with. It definitely broke us down in the first quarter, but then helped us build it. Uh, uh, like, I, I mean, just having been in engineering and all, I was definitely very much like an IC contributing things, but quickly right after like six or nine, eight months after GSB, I'm like, hiring people I'm like going back and hiring from the GSB hiring from elsewhere and I didn't I wouldn't have had the confidence to do that or even put my name in the hat like last year switching to corporate strategy doing more strategy working for a chairman CEO directly um, so I think that's probably where I see like where the five years out has helped me and I still see uh, a lot of my friends who've done masters in CSNL um, you know, where I stand is quite different. And a lot of that I attribute to the GSB, the network for sure, but also just the confidence it built in to go ask for things. Awesome, thanks. And John, do you wanna chime in there? Sure, yeah. So I think I, I, I had a couple of short-term goals going into the GSB, um, which I think generally is fairly tactical in trying to execute on those, which is to make the conversion into from being an individual contributor uh, engineer into being in product uh, and starting to think about things in less of a 
kind of narrow technologically focused way. Um, but broadly, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, everything, everything that the other panelists have, my classmates have said resonates, which is it's very hard to put a five-year plan out there. I, I did certainly didn't do that. <laughs> it was GSB. Uh, just, just kept some general goals. Um, and I think, I don't know, I think things have, have worked out in a way that I'm really happy with, but I can't say that I planned it. Um, uh, and, and in terms of uh, GSB alum involvement, I mean, the first job I got on GSB through iRobot, I was introduced to it by reaching out to a GSB alum who worked there and had a conversation. And <laughs> the funny thing is this, actually, I applied for the job originally without, without knowing anybody and was rejected almost right off the bat. And then I reached out to an alum who was at the company and immediately got a conversation with the hiring manager. So it's funny how that works. Um, and then, and then the, uh, the second job that I had out of GSB uh, after, after iRobot, um, I had been at the company for a couple of years, kind of learned the ropes of what it takes to launch a consumer product um, and had gotten a couple launches under my belt and was like, okay, I really want to get into the startup world. Um, I want to, instead of taking an existing product from, um, you know, to improve its profitability and reach, I want to go from zero to one. I want to help bring new robotics technologies, automation technologies into the world in a way that's actually meaningful and can provide value. Um, who's doing that? So there's, I was in the Boston area uh, and there's a bunch of robotics companies in the Boston area. And I knew a few folks at them from, uh, from, from other periods in my life, but uh, I actually found that uh, there was a GSB alum on the board of, of Berkshire Gray. And I just reached out to him and he immediately got me a conversation with the CEO. Uh, so like those, those sorts of tactical things are, that's, that's how the GSB alumni network can be extremely helpful uh, in that regard. Um, but, you know, at a more personal level, uh, I rely on my GSB friends for advice all the time, um, similar to similar to what Emily mentioned. Um, it's a really great support system. Um, folks who actually, you know, they might not be in your direct industry, but there's lots of corollaries. And they might invest in your industry. They might have consulted for companies in your industry. Like there's, there's just so many different angles of attack that you have uh, with your friends and colleagues and, and through the GSB network that you get to you get to develop a really strong perspective on a space before you even enter it. Um, and that's a huge advantage. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, John, while I have you, there was a question specific to GMix. And since you had shared that you did a GMix, I'd love to, to direct that towards you. Um, when doing a GMix, um, first, just how easy was it to do? Um, and if you could talk a little bit about the support you received from the program office in terms of uh, the GER, the team that kind of oversees global experiences. Um, but also, uh, are you able to customize your experience? You know, is there a way, you know, how do you kind of get placed into a company and things like that? If you could talk a little bit more about that, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so in terms of the customization aspect, that's not a route that I took, though I'm, I'm not sure if it's possible. I imagine that it is. I think that there are folks who have sourced their own GMix opportunities. Um, but what I did is, I think what the majority of people do, the um, career office sources a bunch of opportunities from companies who are looking to bring GSBers in, um, and they'll open up a couple of spots. And there's a huge list. And I, I I would be surprised if all of them get staffed <laughs> because there seems to be more demand for, uh, for GSB talent <laughs> than, uh, than can be fully supplied. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I, I identified a couple of opportunities and um, really what you do is, at least in my experience, is I chatted with a bunch of the um, people who had created those opportunities in those companies and you basically try to find out what's a good fit for what they're looking for and what you're looking for. So. Um, it's, it's partially curated in that there's a certain amount of value that the companies are looking for. Like they want you to do something for them. Um, it's, it's not just, you know, you go have a fun time, like you actually have to contribute something. Um, and that's even more rewarding because of it. Uh, so I, I remember I was talking to, uh, 
some folks in Germany. I forget what they were doing at this point um, in Buenos Aires. And there was another one too um, that I spoke with. But uh, yeah, I, I really clicked with the with the Argentine team. Um, and because they were offering something that was very product focused. And at that point, I hadn't really done anything in product management my previous internship. So I did two internships that summer. I did one in business development at SRI uh, earlier in the summer, which was not product related. That was much more in my research wheelhouse from previously. And then uh, the product one um, in Argentina really um, really struck a chord and I was what they were looking for and they were what I was looking for. So that, that's that's how it worked out. Um, I don't know if there's an aspect of the question that I missed, but I think I mostly- No, that's answer. great. And I think um, because you didn't customize yours, that's absolutely fine. But just to answer the question there, it is possible to customize your experience. Actually, I believe, and if you guys do head nods, but I believe that you can customize not just GMEX, but let's say a global study trip is, uh, there isn't a global study trip offer that really is kind of an area or place you want to focus on or go to, which is hard to imagine because there's such a plethora of choices each year, but um, you can also design. And that's really what the Global Experiences team is there for. They're part of the MBA programs office and they're there to help um, you make sure that you're able to fulfill that requirement in a way that works for you. So um, there are lots of different ways to do that. Um, one of the other questions out there, and I'm gonna direct this to each of you to share, you can share a little bit or a lot um, in terms of this, but you know, for you, when you were at the GSB, what did a typical day look like? And you don't have to walk through a whole day, but I think really the question is getting at, how do you balance um, studying and clubs and recruiting um, and, you know, maybe what some people, I, I always tell, you know, from the admissions perspective and having interacted with students over the years, it's like, I think a lot of times you have to choose and prioritize because time is definitely the biggest commodity. So maybe if you could share um, of an extracurricular activity you were involved in, like just in that way. And as an example of perhaps um, highlighting, you know, maybe how you spent your time. And this is, you know, largely outside of academics then, what were you involved in? Um, Haral, why don't we start with you? Yeah, um, I was thinking it was like, <laughs> doing, really taking us back to that time, right? Um, before I share the answer, I think our class started this week in a life off. So if I think it might still be online. So I would encourage people to read that. Um, and it really talks through a day to day breakdown of what uh, someone is going through. Um, I think for me, like, yeah, typical day, like going back to prioritization as a product person, that's something I'm constantly thinking about. So that's how like, even at the GSV you approach, um, but we used to have that joke, right? You have your study, social and sleep, the three things, and you can choose two out of those three at a given point in time. Um, but for me, I think going in, having a little bit clear picture for me, like, socializing, meeting the people, all of that, it was important. And it was actually challenging myself because I had always been so academic, so study focused and only worried about that growing up in an environment like that was to actually not worry about the grades. So like, not, not to say you should not get good grades, but not like, it's more about what you're learning out of it versus just ticking a box, which is what I was trained to be in the past. So going to the question of like, you know, just how we managed the different times. I think I, um, I know GSP is also very good with like giving us the focus time when it is a recruiting season and stuff, or like also delaying people to come on campus company. So you get the time to adjust. Um, but discovering through the social piece is like important, I think, and how uh, we go about the day-to-day -day life. So yeah, definitely it's like getting your goals for like the weekly or quarterly and then focusing on what you want to get out has been more important to me. Awesome, thanks. Um, Emily, could you share? Sure, I'll try, I'll do second year because second year I really had lots of fun. And I figured out, like to Haral's point, I figured out my priorities a little bit better. First year, I was sort of like a chicken with my head cut off. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted and there was so much to do and I wanted to do everything. Um, but second year, I got very into being healthy. So I'd wake up really early and exercise. I went to like ridiculous uh, Palo Alto exercise classes. Um, and then there's probably like, well, let's say on any given day, I had like two classes. Um, so I'm going to be totally honest. I'd like you know, uh, cram in the case right before the class and make sure that I had like some working knowledge of what was happening when I walked in. Um, and honestly, like the, the discussions and conversations were amazing. But um, so there was like some portion of my day that was that. 
a lot of portion of my day that was socializing in the like main quad area, which I don't even, what was the name? Old Town Square, Old Square? What was it? What? I don't remember the name. So no, someone needs to help me out. <laughs> Town Square. Town Square. Town Square. Okay. <laughs> no, oh, I, I was combining Town Square with Old Town Road, I think that song. Um, so spending a lot of time there, eating lunch, packing in my like salad as much, there was like an amazing like salad deal. Um, and then I probably have like two or three club meetings. I was really involved in women in management. So I would do that for a little bit. Um, I um, was involved in the retail club. So I would do that. Um, and then I would like hang out with my roommates and we would like plan for, we'd host, we hosted a lot of like small group dinners at our uh, house, um, which meant like Stanford gave us money to like bring people over to our house and have dinner. Um, and then, you know, occasionally we were like, maybe we should also do this with professors. So we brought professors and um, had them come over to our house for dinner. Uh, and then Jason was reminding me there was like some fun parties that we went to um, or, you know, just different activities and leagues and stuff. So we went to and then I would probably do that. And then I would repeat the next day. Um, and it was amazing and so much fun. Uh, so that was day in the life, I think. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Jason, do you want to share in since she mentioned you? Yeah, I won't share a day in life because that was a horrible example of prioritization. And so uh, my learning goal, you set learning goals with your uh, groups uh, in week one. And my learning goal that was forced upon me was to learn to say no, um, because I was, I've always been a yes person. And so um, I can talk about pretty much every extra curricular because I was probably involved um and I definitely out of the not just involved he would lead it like literally lead it yeah and out of the three choices that her all mentioned I think I gave up sleep so I definitely pulled way more all-nighters that I would ever recommend just to like plan the GSB show or plan a study trip or plan something for folks um because I love I just love the community so much so what I will say is there's something for everyone whether you want a club around DC or a club around uh, people who love media and the arts, or if you want to club around robotics, or, or honestly, if you want to spend time at other schools, the law school, the med school, there's so many choices. So what I would advise is thinking of your framework early of what are priorities for you, um, which I tell startups now all the time, think of your OKRs and don't do anything else, but think of your priorities and what um, um, you want to say yes to and truly learn to say no to 80% of, of things because um, there are just so many options and it's really tough to, to, to prioritize and you don't want to spread yourself too thin. Awesome, thanks. And John, do you want to chime in there? Yeah, sure. I mean, to, big plus one <laughs> to, <Yeah. laughs> to ruthless prioritization <laughs> and figuring out what your goals are uh, because there's there's way too much going on to be able to do all of it. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, you, you know, yes, class is usually going on in the mornings, but I had a couple of classes that would go on in the evenings. Uh, and in the in-between time, um, I spent a bunch of time in the practice and manufacturing club, as you might expect. Um, and a lot of one-on-ones with folks, uh, especially people who were like in related industries, especially second year, I spent a bunch of time trying to learn as much about different companies as I could. So that could be um, having coffee chat with your professor who's a VC and invests in a couple of these types of companies or um, maybe driving up to SF and going and seeing someone shop and what they're doing um, or going over to Sand Hill Road and um, being shown around by uh, showing the portfolio of companies by one of the investors there. Like there's just, um, there's a lot of that, uh, especially second year, because for me, second year was all about trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do <laughs> when I leave the place. Um, but also there's a ton of socializing. I would play tennis with, uh, with folks often, uh, multiple times a week. Uh, and um, and sometimes volunteer a little bit too. Um, there's a program called uh, East Palo Alto Tennis and Tutoring, which um, I would help out with. Uh, there's basically kids would get tutored and then they would go out and hit the tennis ball around with some folks who, um, who volunteered to do so. Uh, and that was, that was kind of, for me, that was like a little bit of a grounding experience because, um, you know, being, being within the GSB, there's a lot going on and it, it feels like its own world uh, in some respects, uh, but it's also good to, good to get out of it a little bit. Um, and then uh, uh, 
I loved living in my past down house. Um, my housemates and I spent a lot of time together, uh, whether it was, you know, having cookouts or, you know, playing random board games and having folks over. It was, uh, uh, that social experience was, was probably one of the, one of the most tight knit social experiences that I, that I had at GSB. Um, and those are probably the people that I most rely on for, <laughs> for advice these days. Um, but yeah, there's no shortage of things to do. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. And just for those on the call, a pass down house is a term that is used within the GSB community because um, many first year GSB students will live on campus. And when I say many, it's, it's in the high 90%. Um, they'll either live in um, buildings that are directly across the street from the GSB or um, other housing available on the Stanford campus. But after that, in second year, it is common to move um, to in the area around the campus um, in what they call passed down houses, houses that over the years have always been rented to GSB students and just continue to be passed down. So that's um, that term. Uh, Jason, earlier you had mentioned that you actually do refer back to your what matters most uh, question that you answered in, in your application. And you know, we're speaking today to a bunch of people on this call who are embarking on that application process. I'm just curious from the others, um, how often you might also think about your what matters most question and whether you kind of use that as an anchor point ever in, in your life today. Um, maybe Emily, I see you smiling. So I don't know if that's a yes or a no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm smiling because I know someone who's on the, who's an attendee on this panel who I've been talking about my what matters most oh, okay. <laughs> um, essay with a lot with. Um, so honestly, I hadn't looked at it in a really long time. Um, and when I went back to it, I was one reminded exactly what I said, which was good. Um, and like, you could keep myself honest about like, okay, well, how are you living your values? Um, and I think like what I'm really proud of is that like, sure, it didn't look like the exact career path that I thought was going to connect to that. Maybe I haven't achieved that yet, but the, like the work I did then to like, think about what mattered to me. And, um, like, it's still like threads through all that I do at work, all that I do in my like personal life. Um, so without like going super into it yeah. with all of you, um, like a hundred percent, it's like, a, it's something that I'm quite proud of is that I live a life and I work, um, in my career in a way that like reflects my values. Um, and so, yeah, but I hadn't thought about it in a really long time. And as I was um, going through this like application process with this friend, um, I was just reminded that it was a really sort of exhausting, it felt like exhausting and vulnerable to go through the application process um, because I really took it seriously and I really wanted to think about what mattered to me. Um, and so I just want for everybody who's applying right now, like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> like you are going to like, it's like such a gift to be able to like, think about these questions. Um, and even though it's also so annoying, I'm sure and frustrating and you wish you didn't have to do it or all the things um, like the application process really, I think is a really good reflection of what Stanford wants out of like its community members and is a really good like way for you to like also test, like, do I want what Stanford wants? Right. Um, so application process is okay, I promise you'll get through it. And then the other side is like a really beautiful thing. I was gonna awesome. say plus one on the on that essay is like, yeah, I've torn mine like a couple of times. I think the best advice I got is like, write it as if you are really telling that to yourself, no one else is watching. And that's kind of when you really hit that. Um, to kind of just answer that question for me, like what, like definitely, what mattered most is something that is I care a lot about is um, around community empowering others, especially women and like coming from a culture um, that I had to fight my way through it. Like it's something that is near and dear that I've always been part of. Like I launched a women in tech at Apple, um, continue to stay involved at GSB in the women in business and like even right now being sponsors to those. But and uh, going to the women's circle program, Melissa, you mentioned like I just joined the global management board for it to evangelize that across uh, different regions to grow that. So um, it's definitely a part of who I am. It doesn't have to always be just the professional career you choose. 
um, or like, you know, just life. It's just like how you operate. What are your values? What are some things that you deeply care about that will go with you no matter? And it's definitely something that has stayed true uh, throughout the journey. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, John, anything to add to that? Um, um, not a whole lot. I mean, in terms of the what matters most to you and why. Um, for me, I haven't referred back to the actual text that I put in the application, I think, since I wrote it. Um, but the general, the, the general framework uh, that I wrote about it remains my personal guiding framework. Um, so uh, in that sense, yes, I'm always referring back to like, hey, why do I want to make this decision? Um, and being very deliberate about it. Like, I think that that's, that's really where it manifests itself most often is a, when you're faced with a difficult decision, how do you weigh your options? Uh, and B, how do you how do you treat and interact with people on a daily basis? Um, and I think GSB's general philosophy uh, focuses on making sure that when you do those things, you do them with uh, with intention and authenticity. Uh, and to me, that's that's one of my biggest uh, the biggest gains that I got from GSB experience. Awesome. Thank you so much. I do want to do a quick like rapid response because we only have about two more minutes. So if there is anything you wish you could have done differently, because again, this is a five years out. So just thinking a lot back to your time, is there anything you would have done differently? Yes or no. And then if so, what? And it can be a really short answer because we are strapped for time, but I'd love to do just like a rapid response on that. Um, Jason, do you want to I, you were I, I feel like I get all the hard questions first, but no, I think I spoke to it earlier. Um, I think going into first year, I think second year, I really um, did a good job of kind of thinking about how to say no, what my priorities are and, and kind of what that framework is. And also, also not feeling as rushed and thinking of life is a series of incremental steps versus hopping to, straight to that perfect spot. And so I think first year, if I could have adopted that mentality earlier, I might have had a lot more peace <laughs> and not, uh -huh. felt, uh, not felt a scramble. Yeah. John, how about you? Uh, interestingly, I might, I might, I'm going to go the opposite of, of Jason just because my personality is to, I usually find my comfort zone and kind of, kind of stay there. Um, and I think at GSB, I push myself to be a little bit more uh, exploratory and um, try and, you know, try new things compared to what I would do otherwise. But I still think I could have, I could have gotten even more out of the experience if I had let my, uh, let my exploration side of things go a little bit more. Um, if, if I'd spent a little bit more time socializing, maybe a little bit less time reading, like reading, <laughs> reading the cases. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's what awesome. I would Thanks for sharing. Um, Emily, really quickly. Wouldn't change. I think it was pretty good, but if I had to choose, I would say Jason's, but I I'd like actually the exact same thing that Jason said, except I think that was part of the journey. And that's why I like got to second year and was able to do second year the way I did. And I don't know, I believe me, I screwed up and messed things up and things were hard sometimes, but I think it was all part of the journey. Yeah. Awesome. And Haral, I'll give you a chance. Yeah, to I was going in. to say like more travel, <laughs> if that counts, uh, but more travel, more to build the relationships with others, right? So more one-on-ones, more small group dinners and more travel is going to be awesome. mine. Thank you so much to all four of you for being on. We are so appreciative. Um, there's a quick poll just to get some feedback on the event that we'd love for everyone who's on to fill out. I saw so many questions we didn't get to. Um, some we touched on, but others around, um, you know, having master's degrees before coming and different um, questions. I would encourage you to check out our class profile online and, and other resources we have on the GSB website, um, just so you can find out more information. And we encourage you to check our events webpage to come to future events and um, to continue um, you know, learning more and helping having us support you on your journey. Again, thank you to our panelists. You guys were awesome. Mini class of 16 reunion. And um, I appreciate your time. And thank you to everyone who attended. Again, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, thank you so much for your time today, everyone. Mm -hmm.